Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Beyond Essential Systems community demos. Um, I think we'll just get started because we're recording it. So anyone who's not able to make it or who's missed the start can look at the recording at a later time. So thank you so much to all of you who are here and we'll get stuck into it. So today we're gonna show three presentations. Um, one that is Tamanu's integration with mSupply, one that is about Tamanu's printing and barcode scanning features. And then we're gonna add a new element to the demos today, which is bringing in some of our Tupaya functionality. So um, up third, you'll hear from me having a quick introduction to Tupaya, and then I'll show you how to generate a report from a map overlay. Um, we've decided that probably a lot of the people on here are using both platforms as we start to put more Tamanu data into Tupaya to show aggregate data. So we'll start to incorporate a bit more Tupaya learning into these demos. We always start with a quick overview of the tech stack just to sort of remind you where each piece sits and what you're looking at as we um, as we present. So if this is new to you, I guess the whole point of this diagram is to show you that everything is interconnected and speaks to each other. So what we're really trying to do here is avoid data duplication. So if you're using Tamanu and putting um, patient level data in at the EMR level, we certainly wouldn't ask you to re-enter data in an aggregate situation via Meditrack to show in Tupaya. We pull that data straight in from Tamanu into Tupaya. Um, we are able to show M supply data in Tupaya. We're able to incorporate DHIS2. So basically what we're trying to do is give more people access to data without needing to go to each of these individual departments or people and ask them to prepare a report for you. So by pulling in M supply data, we're hoping to free up pharmacy from having to make those reports available to the different projects. Um, we're hoping to give DHIS to the HIS team the information that they need from individual patient level data collection using Tamanu, all sorts of ways that different systems can speak to each other to limit the amount of times that the same data is re-entered into an electronic system. There's five important principles of Tamanu that we also always begin these demos with so that um, we're just sort of giving a broad overview before we get into the nitty gritty. So it's sync enabled, it works offline. Um, we know the context that we built it for is not always reliable come, you know, when it comes to internet. So um, it can continue working in an offline setting. It's free and open source. It works on both desktop and mobile. So it's enabled to do sort of more serious data collection at the desktop level where you might be in a hospital, but it also can work in the field if you've got a mobile um, device while you're doing some data collection or um, outreach programs. The data is fully encrypted at all times so that you don't have to worry about the security of the data. And it's got quite good interoperability. So we let, as you saw in the previous tech stack, we make sure that all the systems speak to each other so that we are able to pull data in and out of other systems as required. And I think that's it for the intro. So I will pass over to Michael, who's going to begin with the mSupply integration. Uh, thanks, Ez, and um, hello to everyone. Um, uh, it's um, a fairly brief demo from me today, but I thought I would just revisit that diagram just in another form. Um, we often show this diagram um, showing the various softwares um, talking to each other. And a lot of people have seen examples of integration, for example, between Tamanu and Tupaya or, or between Meditrack um, and Tupaya.org. Um, today we're showing you the integration between mSupply and Tamanu, uh, which is one of the newer integrations um, that we're quite uh, excited about. Um, to show you on a slightly deeper level, I don't know that necessarily everyone's interested in this and I don't want to get too deep into the tech, um, but the way that we um, are trying to set up all our integrations with Tamanu is using a standard called HL7 Fire. And HL7 Fire um, is, is what's, what's called a REST API effectively that just conforms to a certain format. You don't really need to understand what that means, except that it's a... Um, a globally accepted way of structuring 
um, not just your data, but the the way that that data communicates with other systems. And and if you're using if you're conforming to the HL7 Fire standard in the way that you share your data, in theory, it's really easy for um, other health softwares to um, to to also pick it up through the same mechanism. Um, as I say, you, you, you don't need to understand um, all of that, but it's uh, it's it's a really um, quite robust and really expandable and scalable way of exchanging data. And today we're going to be demonstrating an HL7 Fire integration between Tamanu and M Supply. Um, this is a little bit more on HL7. There's a ton to HL7 and it probably deserves its own presentation. And I wouldn't be the person to give that presentation. I'm not a, a developer or anything, but this is an example of a level three um, implementation of HL7 Fire. Um, where it's both the data model and data exchange um, between them. So that's a bit of the tech stuff, but I won't I won't keep going down there because no one's interested. Let's just get into the um, let's just get into the uh, actual demonstration of what it looks like. Now this will look quite boring in some ways because um, it, you know a lot of integrations are really not that exciting. But what's going on in the background is really exciting. So that I don't have to switch between. To Manu and M Supply. I'm just going to show you three patients um, that are in the system. The first is Noah Alonso. So this is on the Tamanu side. Um, you can take note of his um, uh, what we call here NHN or his display ID, um, the patient ID for Noah Alonso, FZIJ. I have that written down, so you don't need to worry about it. Date of birth is the 9th of July 72. Um, first name Noah, second name Alonso. The second patient um, is the um, uh, Peter Blant. Uh, his um, ID number is MXNA336600, and he was born on the 10th of March, 1963, a Pisces. Um, what a legend. Uh, and then Hilda Battle, um, KSXF715399. Um, um, date of birth 3rd of March. Of course, as I say, you don't need to remember any of this. I'm just showing you those three patients because that's who I'm going to be demoing on the other side. And this will save me from cutting back and forth, which will be a bit, um, bit choppy. So all three of those patients are in this Tamanu um, database and we can go and interact with them and um, do all sorts of things with them. But when uh, Hilda finishes, um, for example, if we give her a prescription, uh, moxicillin, uh, take two TDS um, till all finished, uh, whoever the prescriber is, um, and you can do a discharge quantity of 30. Okay, so we oh, need the root of administration. No, oh. So we confirm that, and then when we discharge um, uh, Hilda, uh, we can do this. We can include that discharge medication on her thing. Now, this is um, not going to work today, I, but what you will be able to do in the future is send that prescription to pharmacy. That integration is not set up between these two systems, but we just want to demonstrate to you that you can create a discharge prescription um, in uh, Tamanu when you come back and look at Hilda. Uh, we should be able to see that patient warning keeps flashing out that obviously doesn't happen with all patients. She's got a medication warning on uh, a warning on the patient. Uh, you can see her most recent discharge medications. And I just wanted to show you that because that's the that's the phase two of this integration that we're building out to. You can see the most recent discharge medications um, just there. So I'm going to stop sharing and come to the M supply side. Now, I know a lot of you um, potentially haven't used M supply or um, are only sort of vaguely um, familiar with it. But the use case for M Supply, well, M Supply is an end-to-end -end supply chain system. So procurement, quantification, warehousing, distribution, transport, last mile distribution, and patient dispensing. So if you're in the dispensary of a hospital or a, or a large health center, you are using M Supply desktop um, to dispense to patients. And that is tracking their medication records. It's also tracking the commodity. It makes all of your quantification um, end to end. There is also a dispensing module in mobile, um, but I'm uh, it's a it's a sort of stripped down functionality in mobile. I'm demonstrating the desktop version today. M Supply is very very powerful software. It's it's been around for about twenty years um, and used in about thirty five countries now. So if we come here and we um, add a new prescription, um, I 
uh, the patient has presented to me and I want to um, uh, dispense a prescription to them, but I can't find their name in the system. Okay. Um, if I uh, if I search, well, Hilda Battle is in the system because I've already brought her across. I just wanted to show you what it looks like um, when a patient is already there. But if I try and find uh, Noah Alonso, they're not there. Uh, but he is standing in front of me. I know what his ID is. He has a card or uh, his name is written on the script um, or he's printed an ID card, which you can do in Tamanu, but he's not yet in M Supply. Now, usually for an implementation, what we would do is do a bulk import to start with, but we then want to stay in sync with Tamanu being the source of truth for patient IDs and M Supply searching that Tamanu database rather than creating patients on Tamanu and getting discrepancies. So we're going to do a remote search. Now I'm using an emulator today and in testing, uh, sorry, it's, a, it's like a remote connection and it is occasionally disconnecting from the server, but that is a um, that is an issue with, with TS Plus that we're using. It hasn't happened here, it's worked beautifully, but, um, but if that does happen, just wanna give you a warning in advance. So that has just searched as quickly as that, the Tamanu database that we we're just looking at before and it's found Noah Alonso. There's his code, there's his date of birth. We're going to select him, bring him across, and now we can dispense to him, go through the, the rest of the M Supply process. This is not a tutorial on the M Supply um, dispensing module, but it's really, really good. And, um, and now I'm dealing with the same patient. I haven't had to create a new patient. I'm not creating duplicate records. Um, I'm not sort of splitting people out. The Noah Alonso in Tamanu is now the Noah Alonso in M Supply, and they have the same code, same date of birth, um, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna delete that. Um, come back in and do a new prescription. Uh, this time we're going to say, we don't know much about this patient because I can't uh, read his name. Okay, the only patient in the system with the surname starting with B is Hilda Battle, but I want Peter Bland. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna do a remote search and I'm going to change these parameters. What I can make out is his date of birth. Okay, third, 1963 okay i can make out that so i'm going to run a search on that and see if i can return any results and there you go there's peter bland and it's searching that database relatively quickly um, i can now find the patient and just by double clicking i have imported peter into the m supply system it's as quick as that um, so now i can go through and dispense that prescription um, to him so again i'm going to delete that but now the next time that Peter presents um, to, the, uh, to the service, I can come in here and I can say Peter Bland and there he is. I don't need to do an external search. Peter Bland is there and I can, um, I can dispense to him and, and do, whatever I, uh, do whatever I like. Final point, if I make a mistake and I do a remote search, is there a chance that I could import, um, import Peter twice? And the answer is, now this is what I was warning you about. This is an issue with TS Plus. It's, it's nothing to do with the connection between M Supply and, um, and Tamanu. It's just um, TS Plus is disconnecting from the server occasionally. Uh, so if I look for um, Peter Bland, who is down here, okay, you can see that line here. You can see already that he's in M Supply. I can't. I can't import him twice. It's not going to make a mistake and create a duplicate record or anything like that. It recognizes that he's already in M supply and it's using that unique patient code to do that. So I can double click and select him from there, or I can just go out and, um, and select him through the normal M supply thing. And then again, dispense to dispense to him. So look, it, it doesn't look that exciting, I know, but what is happening on the back end is, is really, um, really quite cool. It's really quite fast. Um, and uh, yeah, and it can be set up, um, yeah, it's got really flexible deployment options. So you can be doing that in the cloud or you can be doing it with locally deployed servers that are just pointing to, um, pointing to each other um, within a local area network so that, so that the system can be set up to work um, offline. Um, now, this is phase one of a three phase integration. The next phase uh, is, is relatively easy to do and we're working towards it already where we will be sharing that um, discharge medication into the M supply system so that it will automatically populate the script um, so that you don't have to sit there and do any further data entry. 
The final phase, um, we will return dispensed medications back to Tamanu um, and we'll very happily demonstrate that to you when it's all finished. But um, this is now working. It'll be in the next version release for everyone that's using mSupply and Tamanu. You need the latest versions of both softwares. Um, you'll need the, an update to your mSupply version and to your Tamanu version. Um, so just need to speak to the support team and get that scheduled in the next couple of weeks. But super exciting and really happy about it. Um, and uh, a lot of hard work has gone into what looks like a relatively simple feature on the front end, going to make a big difference in places like uh, Samoa, um, Nauru, a couple of other places besides. Um, that is it from me. I will throw back to, um, back to Ez. Thank you, Mick. Uh, now we are going to give our newest project manager to the Tamanu team um, a warm introduction. Regina, welcome. And she is going to take you through barcode scanning. Thanks, cool. Regina. Thanks, Erin. All right, I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully, everyone can see the Tamanu interface. If you can't, just let me know. Um, so I'm just going to be demonstrating the new print function that we've got for imaging requests, lab requests and prescriptions. So I'm going to search for my patient. We've got another Noah this morning. Um, so for clinical context, we will pretend that Noah has presented to an outpatient clinic. So he's got an active encounter in our outpatient clinic. He's had a bit of a bike accident, presented to the clinic um, with a bit of a gash on his ankle um, and some severe leg pain. So I'm going to open up the encounter. Um, we're pretty sure that young Noah has probably broken his leg, but we need to send him off to the local hospital to get a bit more imaging done. So he needs an x-ray um, and maybe a few more bits and pieces. So I'll come down to the imaging tab in my active encounter, um, and I'm gonna put in a new imaging request. So clicking this dark blue new imaging request button down the bottom. Okay, and I'll put in the required field. So we'll say that Alan Smith is requesting this X-ray. It's a bit urgent, Noah's in quite a bit of pain. Um, and we're gonna select the imaging request type, which is an X-ray and the area to be imaged is our right lower limb. So the new feature that we've got here is this new button that you'll see, which is gives you two options. You can either select finalize, um, which did what the imaging request pop-up did before. You click finalize, it closes the window and you can return to it at a later date. The new functionality is this drop down arrow. So if I click that, it will bring up the option for us to finalize and print. So I click that and it brings up this little print preview of an imaging request that can be printed. So it's pulling in a few basic details from Tamanu. So we've got Noah's first name, last name, date of birth, his sex. Um, and we're also pulling in his unique patient identifier. Um, in this version of Tumanu, this is called a national health number. For your country, this might be called an MRN, a unique patient ID. Um, whatever is relevant to your country. Um, noting as well that things like the country shield, this Ministry of Health wording is all customizable to your country. Um, in the middle section of our request, um, you'll just see a table with some basic details, um, a unique request ID, the request date, facility, um, the clinic, the practitioner that is requesting the x-ray, level of urgency, the type of image and the area to be imaged. So we can go ahead and print that now. Um, as I said, this functionality is available in imaging labs and medication. Um, I wanna take you through the relevance of the barcode, which I think is probably best described in labs. So um, at the time that Noah came and presented to the clinic, I, I took a bit of a wound swab and I'm gonna send that off with Noah when he heads off to the hospital to get his X-ray. Um, and I'll just show you as well that, as I said, you've got the option to finalize or finalize in print. If you don't have a printer handy at the time and you just click finalize on any of your requests, you could come back into the lab request, the imaging request later on and print it. So in the case of our lab request, 
we're going to look at the top right hand corner and look for this drop down arrow, which gives us the ability to print the lab request at a later date. So we'll see this brings up the familiar print preview that we saw before with the imaging request. Um, and you'll see as well, we've got this barcode. So I've printed this one off um, earlier on. Um, in clinical relevance, let's pretend that I'm um, working in the lab at a hospital. I'm gonna come to my navigation bar on the left and click request. I've got Noah's lab request in my hand and I'm also using a barcode scanner at uh, the lab. So the great thing about barcode that we've put is it just speeds up time when you're processing a lot of lab requests at once. So I can click into this unique patient identifier field, which as I said earlier, in this version of Tumanu is referred to as a national health number, but this might be an MRN, a unique patient ID, some other um, field that you've got in your country. So I've got a handy barcode scanner with me now. So hopefully you'll hear the beep. And you'll see that that's automatically populated the unique patient ID in Tamanu. All I have to do is click search and that's bringing up um, the wound swab that I requested. I've just got two because um, I did a dummy run earlier on. So I'll open up Noah's lab request and you'll see this is exactly what we found um, on the patient by going into the active clinic encounter earlier. So um, for the interest of completeness, I'll show you how to, um, what it looks like when you go in and print a prescription. So navigating back into the active encounter for Noah, we will open up Noah's active clinic encounter coming down into the medication tab now. So um, we can pretend that Noah's gone and had his imaging. Yep, we've confirmed it's um, a simple fracture um, in his tibia. And unfortunately, we're gonna, we're gonna send Noah home with nothing more than a little bit of ibuprofen. So I've prepared the prescription um, a little bit earlier, but we'll do it again, just so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so we've got ibuprofen. 200 milligrams, give it to him orally. Prescriber again is Alan, just say one to two tablets every four to six hours, patient pain. And then again, you'll see that familiar finalize button with your two options to finalize now, or we see that drop down arrow, which allows us to finalize and print. So this is our prescription print preview. Um, a few other fields that I'd like to bring your attention to. Um, again, in this version of Tumanu, we've got a residential landmark field that might be a patient address in your country, um, depending on how you've got Tumanu configured on your end. Um, we've also got this blank field for prescriber ID. Um, our plan is to have every clinician in Tamano associated with their own practitioner ID. That will come in future releases, but for now, you've still got that ability to print and you can hand write your prescriber ID in there. So we've got all the familiar fields that are appropriate for a prescription, um, our facility, the medication that needs to be dispensed, the route, um, and then some notes, and you can obviously sign that. Again, if you are using, my understanding is if you're using M Supply, you can also use this barcode to put your pet unique patient ID directly into M Supply, just allowing you to bring up um, that prescription and dispense a little bit quicker. So hopefully that's given you kind of a basic run through of those three print um, options that we've got now in labs imaging and of course prescriptions and giving you a bit of a clinical relevance and, and workflow for how that might be um, relevant to your countries. Um, any questions, please just pop them in the chat. Back to you, Erin. Thank you, that was very interesting. Um, I am now going to present my presentation <laughs> um, on Tapaya. So 
I, I will, um, I think it's relevant for everybody, even if you're currently not using Tapaya, just because it gives you some, a little bit of information about what, um, what we can show on the Tamanu side of data pulled into an aggregate situation. Um, but also it's got a few other applications that might be a bit broader than the Tamanu chat. Um, so just in case you haven't seen this today already, this is what we're talking about at the moment, to pi in the middle. So really what it is, is a, is a place where we can pull data from, from any other source. Um, and there's a, a few other sources that we don't have listed on here that um, data comes into to pi from. So really what it is, is a data aggregation and visualization platform. So this example on the screen is our project called Strive that's active in Papua New Guinea. And basically there's two ways in which we show information through Chapaya. One is, is it a piece of information that will look good graphed? So this is a vector program, um, Strive, and what's of note here and why it is important, mapped, sorry, does the data look good graphed or does the data look good mapped? And if it looks good mapped, then we will show it on the map. If it looks good graphed, we will show it on the right-hand side in what we call a dashboard. So the point of this project there um, is to look at vector-borne illnesses and where they are. And as a lot of you probably know, Papua New Guinea has really different types of provinces. So we've got the highlands with different temperatures, different urban spread to the lowlands. So what we like to show in this map in particular is, is there more or less malaria in the different areas? Is there more or less um, commodity availability depending on you know the different provinces so across all projects if we map data we're looking for trends um, on, on location basis so you know in the Solomon Islands is it really hard to get to Renbel so does that affect drug supply um, you know in Papua New Guinea it's is there less malaria or is there more malaria on the border with Indonesia is there less so this is sort of this is the point each project has its own piece of information it's trying to portray. Um, and sometimes that information needs to be shown in a dashboard over here on the right, because it's um, something that can only be shown in text or in graph format. And sometimes it's really relevant to pop it on a map. Um, so there are our two sections. Now, what happens is data can be pulled in at any level um, and then it auto aggregates depending on the view that you change to. So if we collect uh, immunization data at the village level, we can then aggregate that data up to show across the districts, across the provinces, what the vaccination rate is, how many people have been vaccinated, how many people still need to be vaccinated. And it just depends on having all the data available to show that information. So do we have a denominator that is all the population so that we can show a percentage of people that have been reached? Or do you just want to show, you know, the number of facilities that were assessed this month? So any piece of information that you want to show we sit down and work out how best to get that information showing at each of the levels that they want to see it at. Um, I'll show an example of a few different levels of data capture. So this is a, the team out in Fiji this week doing Tupaya Meditrack data capture for the UNFPA reproductive health platform. So they're entering data in at the facility level and then in real time, those visuals at the facility level are updated. So you can see here that the service availability, there's number of women provided services that they've added in at the facility level. And then the next visual will show that we aggregate that data to show that the summary of how Western division is doing. Um, and that's the people that work at the provincial level or the divisional level, they might want to see how their whole division is doing. They might wanna see it broken down by facility within their division. So we can aggregate data up from the facility level for the Western division like this. We can then pull it up to show how Fiji as a whole is performing um, for the relative reproductive health staff at the national level. And then with this project, because it covers eight Pacific Island countries because the um, UNFPA Fiji office is running the project and they want a bit of oversight over all their countries, we then pull it into a regional level. So we can show sort of country comparisons and all sorts of visuals at the regional level. So basically we've got the capacity to change the way that those entities are displayed depending on any project's needs. So for example, for a project in Fiji called WISH, one of the entities that we capture is a water catchment. So it's got nothing to do with health facilities. It's just dependent on who is using the water around their village. And we want to put the water catchment as a level in the hierarchy. So here it says, regional subnational facility village 
instead of having a facility or, um, on that data, we would have a water catchment. So it can be quite flexible to PIA with how the data is pulled in and what entities it's stored against. Um, now for today, I assume that everybody's used to PIA just a little bit. So that was just a quick, into, uh, a quick overview. So what I'm gonna show you now is a demo of a map overlay report generator. So I'll give you a bit of context to this as I um, find the right screen. But what, um, basically what happened is that we've got, um, we've got the capacity to build a report that is a map overlay or that is a, um, a dashboard as mentioned. And basically we got to the situation where we wanted to show, so sorry, these are the dashboards over here and these are the map overlay selected. And we wanted to show the information that's represented in a map overlay in a format that could actually turn into a to-do list. Um, so what we wanted to make sure is that if we had a list here of, so the active map overlay is family planning services. So it's under the subheading reproductive health services available. And the green arrows mean, yes, this service is available. No, the service is not available. But how do we create an action list that lists for me all the facilities that don't offer family planning services so the reproductive health team can go out and you know, upskill those facilities that require it? So instead of turning every single map overlay into a dashboard item over here so that there was more, you know, more mess in the dashboard side, we added in a handy feature called the report generator. So if you see this button up here, which some of you, you know, was added without much um, discussion, so you might not have noticed it, you click on generate report and it will pull all the information from that map overlay into a table on the screen, which you can then export to Excel. So this table comes up with a um, automatic A to Z sorting by facility name. And you can tell that that is the active sorting by this arrow here. Now, because I wanna make an action list where the facilities that do not offer family planning service are of note to me, I can change the order to be, see the arrow is gone from there. It's shown up here, which means now we are sorting by family planning services. We're not sorting by facility level. So if I click that again, it will reverse the order. Then I can see yes to no. So say this overlay was showing, you know, um, a percentage or a value and you wanted to look at the highest value to the lowest value, you could sort it this way. So if I change that again, now my action list is, I am interested in these facilities that do not offer family planning. But I also have a double check here that the survey was completed on what date. So now in 2019, these facilities said no, but these were surveyed this year, so they're up to date. So I guess in the list that I generate here, I know that these facilities don't offer family planning services and these ones I'd probably wanna double check given the data is a few years old, but I've at least got an action list that the reproductive health team can start to speak to these hospitals. <laughs> the maternity hospital should probably offer. Anyway, I guess it's too late by the time you're at a maternity hospital. And then if you wanna click this button here, that'll export it to Excel and then that data will be available in Excel in a format that you can further analyze, um, export, et cetera. Um, I'll just show you one more example I've got open over here. So if you wanted to do an infrastructure report or you wanted to create um, something that the infrastructure team would be expected to go out and act on, you might want a list of say, facilities that have a functional generator. And again, you generate that report and it'll show us the name of the facility because the arrow is here. We know that it's separated, but it's sorted by facility in alphabetical order, but I can sort it by who's got a functional generator, who doesn't have a generator. And then if I keep scrolling, it'll show me down to who does have generators. And again, the date of data collection, and I can export that for further use if I want. Um, I guess you could also use it um, in your own way of seeing when, so when the most recent um, survey was done and when facilities were surveyed. Um, the, the reason the dates are different here is because this is a different survey um, that populates this map overlay as opposed to the one that we saw before, which was a UNFPA reproductive health spot check survey. So um, one more thing I'll just show you since we're here that I find very handy about map overlays in Chapaya is there's a lot of gray here that we don't really care about. I mean, yes, some people have a generator and that's of note. No, they don't have a generator also of note and no generators of note, but no data 
is um, not very interesting. So by clicking that button, I turn off the no data. So it stops um, clouding my view. So I can also, if I just care about the answers that are no, I can turn off the yeses and I can just leave those two data sets up. So please note that you can always toggle on and off what's going on with the data set by, by turning a one single piece off. So again, you can go into electricity. And then if I go now back to generator, they are all going to be back on by default. So I haven't broken anything. I can just now click no data again if I want to turn it off again. And that was all I wanted to show today. So I can gift you back the last 20 minutes of the hour. Um, I'll just check if we've got, oh, sorry. The working generator was the green, the broken generator was the red and no generator was the blue. Um, unless Michael or Regina have anything else to add, that is all we wanted to show you today. And we thank you again for your time and for joining. And we hope to see you next month, same time, same place. Have a great day. Thanks all.